Thumbelina, Snow White, and Stalker II ventured into the forest together. As they strolled along, Thumbelina proudly declared, I'm the tiniest being in the world. Snow White, not to be outdone, stated with confidence, And I'm the most beautiful creature in the world. Stalker II, with a unique claim of its own, chimed in, saying, I'm the most eagerly anticipated game. They continued their journey, walking deeper into the woods until they eventually reached the enigmatic House of Truth. When Thumbelina emerged, her eyes welled with tears, and she lamented, How can this be? I'm not the smallest after all. Tom Thumb is even tinier than I am. Snow White followed, her voice filled with disbelief as she exclaimed, Oh my goodness, I'm not the fairest of them all. Sleeping Beauty surpasses me in beauty. Curiously, there was no sign of Stalker II emerging from the House of Truth, leaving the others to wonder about its fate. It's a story best shared in person. On a chilly winter day, an elderly man ventured out onto a frozen lake. With determination, he cut a hole in the ice, lowered his fishing line, and settled in, patiently waiting for a fish to take the bait. Nearly an hour passed, and the old man's fishing line remained undisturbed, not even a slight nibble. Just then, a young boy arrived on the scene. He, too, created an opening in the ice not far from the old man and cast his fishing line into the frigid waters. Astonishingly, it took only a minute before wham! A sizable largemouth bass latched onto the boy's hook, and he skillfully reeled in his catch. The old man couldn't help but think it was mere luck. But the boy continued to drop his line, and within a matter of minutes, he had pulled in yet another impressive fish. This pattern continued, with the boy consistently outfishing the old man. As time wore on, the older fisherman's patience waned, for he had not caught a single fish throughout the entire ordeal. Finally, he decided he had to seek advice and approach the boy. Son, the old man began, I've been out here for well over an hour without a single nibble. You've only been here for a few minutes, and you've already caught about half a dozen fish. How do you do it? The boy attempted to respond, but his words were unintelligible, coming out as roo ra fru re pra rooms rarm Puzzled, the old man asked, I'm sorry, could you please repeat that? I couldn't understand a word you said. Once more, the boy attempted to communicate, roo ra fru re pra rooms rarm The old man, growing more confused, replied, I'm truly sorry, but I still can't grasp what you're saying. Then, with a playful gesture, pantomiming spitting into your hand, the boy finally made it clear. You have to keep the worms warm. The mother superior gathers all the nuns in the refectory and addresses them with a stern expression. Sisters, she begins, while we were tending to our garden this morning, we made a rather concerning discovery. Upon hearing this, Ninety-nine nuns collectively emit a horrified gasp, their faces reflecting anxiety and anticipation. But there's always one in the group who finds humor in the most unexpected moments, and in this case, one nun can't help herself and lets out a mischievous teehee. The mother superior, undeterred, continues, Not only did we find a discarded condom, the room is filled with a renewed sense of shock, as the nuns collectively gasp in horror once again, their minds racing to comprehend this unusual discovery. But our cheerful nun is still holding her laughter in, maintaining her tee-hee as a secret amusement. The mother superior adds the final blow, saying, It had been used! The nun's previous gasp of horror now deepens, and they seem even more taken aback by this revelation. However, our merry nun, seemingly unable to control her amusement, lets out another teehee. The mother superior, now delivering the ultimate surprise, concludes, and furthermore, it had a split in it. At this point, the 99 nuns who initially gasped in horror have their priorities shifted, and they join in the laughter, unable to contain themselves as they finally understand the playful spirit of their fellow nun. Meanwhile, our one mischievous nun, realizing her mistake, 
is left with a horrified gasp of her own, caught in her own act of amusement. John and Mary decided to start a garden together. They were excited to grow their own vegetables and save money on groceries. Mary, in particular, had a passion for making homemade pickles and she needed cucumbers for her secret recipe. They planted cucumbers, dill, and all the other necessary ingredients for her famous pickles. As they tended to their garden, they were filled with anticipation, dreaming of the delicious pickles that would soon grace their pantry shelves. However, their cucumbers didn't seem to be flourishing as expected. They were small, oddly shaped, and not nearly enough to meet Mary's pickle-making needs. John watched as his wife became increasingly frustrated with their struggling cucumber plants. One evening, John walked into the kitchen and found Mary sitting at the table, staring at a plate of underwhelming cucumbers. She sighed and said, John, I was really hoping we could save some money by growing our own cucumbers, but this crop is just not up to par. John looked at her with a reassuring smile and said, Well, dear, maybe the cucumbers just need some encouragement. They say a watched pot never boils. Perhaps we're just putting too much pressure on them to become great cucumbers. Mary raised an eyebrow, considering his words. You might be right, John. Maybe we're just being too hard on our cucumbers. Let's give them some space and see how they turn out. With that decision, they stopped obsessing over the cucumbers and allowed nature to take its course. They continued to care for the garden, but didn't scrutinize their cucumber plants as closely. As the weeks passed, the cucumbers began to grow and flourish. They were soon the perfect size and shape for Mary's pickle recipe. Mary was overjoyed, and she made a batch of the most incredible pickles. As they enjoyed their delicious homemade pickles, John couldn't resist a little pun. Well, Mary, he said with a chuckle, it seems our cucumbers were just going through an up-dill battle. They needed some space to grow, and now they're thriving, Mary laughed and agreed. You're absolutely right, John. Sometimes you just have to let things be and give them a chance to shine. Our cucumbers have certainly taught us that. And so, John and Mary continued to tend to their garden, understanding that sometimes a little patience and a bit of humor can make all the difference when it comes to growing cucumbers and making pickles. Tom had recently started dating a wonderful woman named Sarah. They had a fantastic connection, shared many interests, and were both head over heels for each other. However, Tom couldn't help but feel a bit awkward about one particular aspect of their relationship. You see, Sarah had the same first name as Tom's sister, Sarah. While he was delighted to be with his new girlfriend, every time they were intimate, he found it challenging to shake the thought that he was with someone who shared his sister's name. This had become a constant distraction during their intimate moments. Tom decided to confide in his best friend, Mark, about his dilemma. Mark listened attentively as Tom explained his predicament. After hearing the whole story, Mark burst into laughter. You're worried about that? Come on, man, it's just a name, Mark exclaimed. You've got a fantastic girl who's into you, and you're letting something as trivial as a name get in the way? Tom nodded, but couldn't help feeling a little embarrassed. I know it's silly, but it's always at the back of my mind. I just wish I could focus on being with her without this distraction. Mark leaned in and said, I've got a solution for you, Tom. Why don't you come up with a special nickname just for her? Something unique that'll help you separate your girlfriend from your sister in your mind. Tom's eyes lit up with enthusiasm at the suggestion. That's a great idea, Mark. I'm going to think of the perfect nickname for her. Over the next few days, Tom pondered different names and endearing nicknames that could work. Finally, he settled on calling his girlfriend Sunshine. It was a name that felt right for her, and it had nothing to do with his sister. Tom was eager to try out the new nickname, and when he saw Sarah, he greeted her with a warm smile and said, Hey there, sunshine. Sarah beamed and said, I love that nickname, Tom. From that day forward, sunshine became their special term of endearment. It worked like magic for Tom, allowing him to fully enjoy his relationship without any awkward thoughts about shared names. So Tom and Sunshine continued their journey together, growing closer, 
making wonderful memories and creating a unique bond that extended beyond a mere name. Tom had learned that sometimes a little creativity and a dash of humor can solve the most unusual dilemmas in a relationship. 